Hello, in this video, we're gonna take a quick, very high level view of the mesh central design and architecture. And we're gonna do it through the document that's available online on the design and architecture guide. So let's take a look at that. If you're going to run your own Mesh Central server, you probably want to understand the basic designs, get at least a high level overview of how the system works and so on. And so that's what we're going to take a look at today. And the way we're going to take a look at that is we are going to start by going on MeshCentral.com, which is the main website for Mesh Central. And in the download section, there's a, uh, the third download on the right is the uh, design and architecture guide. So I'm gonna click on that. And we're just gonna take a look at this document. And what I'm gonna basically do is just take a look at some of the diagrams here and describe them. And uh, the first document, the diagram we're gonna show is the three main, main components of Mesh Central, which is the web application, the server, and the agent. So of course the web application is hosted on the server, but it's downloaded over to uh, your browser, it's quite a, a big web application, it's real time, it has a lot of functionality, and so that is kind of a deliverable of its own. The server uh, obviously has a lot of uh, work in it to receive all these connections and uh, do access control, interact with the database, and you know route all the traffic correctly and do all the features that are needed here. And then there's the agent. Um, the agent is built in C, with some C++, but mostly C code. It is portable in lots of different operating system. And it, the agent has its own runtime for running JavaScript. And so it can, um, it can receive JavaScript from the server and run it on the agent. So you have a, basically a browser uh, running JavaScript. You have the server built in Node.js running JavaScript. And then you have the agent running a, a, a runtime engine called duct tape, also running JavaScript. So one of the th nice things for us developers is that we're now running JavaScript on all three components, makes a lot of things easy. The communication is all mostly done using WebSockets and we use uh, JSON as the format for exchanging data between the web application and the agent and the server and so on. So that's a really basic high level of uh, what's going on. <clears throat> so here, uh, actually this is the same diagram I just described. You have your C++ agent. Once you install the agent, the agent will contact the server. The server will push a new version of the JavaScript and the, uh, and the JavaScript will then run in the server. The agent is uh, always or mostly self-updated by, uh, by the server. So if you update your server, next time the agent connects, if the agent needs to be updated, it will be updated automatically. Um, same for the, obviously for the browser, if you update the server, when the browser connects to the server, it will get the latest web application. So that's how that works. So in other videos, we talked about um, the directories a little bit, so I won't go into too much into that, but there's a set of dependencies that Mesh Central you know, uses. And so you have your core dependencies that when you install Mesh Central, you get you know, more libraries from NPM. And then there's some uh, dependencies that are optional depending on uh, additional features you have. So for example, if you're using Let's Encrypt or you're using um, uh, some two-factor authentication or SMS, then those additional modules will be installed, uh, but only when needed. So folders. Um, I won't go through that, but there's basically a, a few folders with important configuration. There's a bunch of code files. The, um, the server supports by default any DB as the built-in database. That's good for a couple hundred uh, devices, but if you're going to do anything in production quality, uh, you know, pr production usage, something that's a little more, um, needs a little bit more robustness, I really recommend you upgrade to uh, MongoDB. Mesh Central also supports MariaDB and MySQL. So you have you know, your choice of database uh, that you want to use. So as far as uh, certificates, uh, certificates, sorry. So 
Uh, and security is super important when it comes to uh, you know, managing remote devices. When you install the agent, the agent will create itself its own uh, self-signed certificate based on a, a trusted a good source of random. And then it will, uh, it will use that as an identifier to the server. Now, any agent can, can create a certificate and connect to the server. However, agents cannot impersonate other agents. So, you know, one, you can't have an agent impersonate a different machine on the network because there's no way for that uh, second imposter agent to generate the same certificate that the first agent did. So there's, um, there are going to be different identifiers. They're going to be recognized by the server as different machines. So that's one of the inter interesting attributes here. If you're running the 64-bit uh, version of the agent on Windows, there's, and you have a TPM um, uh, on the computer you're running the agent, then the agent will harden the certificate or its identity using the hardware TPM. On the server, there's many more certificates are created. There's a root cert that signs the, uh, the MPS cert. This is for AMT. There is a, uh, it signs also the uh, web cert, the default web cert. That's for your HTTPS server. And then the agent cert, which is super important. That's the one that uniquely identifies the server to all the agents. So you want to back up these, especially the root and the agent cert, because that uh, uniquely identifies your server. When the agent connects, it will make sure to, that your server can validate it has the private key to the uh, agent certificate before it accepts the connection. So don't lose these. Anyway, the document goes through the different certificates here that we have, uh, how the agent certificate works. There's, um, there's two different systems we use. If you have hardening of the certificate, we, we generate two of them. If you don't have hardening, uh, for example, on Linux, or if you don't have TPM, then we'll, we'll generate one certificate and we'll use it for everything. And this is in order to be as fast as possible on the agent. A um, little bit of a word here on TLS security. Obviously, Mesh Central by default connects on port 443. And the, uh, the settings on that port have to be set up correctly so that you have as high security as you can. So Mesh Central will accept TLS uh, 1.2 and 1.3 with only cipher suites and options that give it an A rating according to SSL Labs. So if you install a Mesh Central server and then use SSL Lab to check you know, the, the security, it should, you should get an A rating for that. There's an additional port that Mesh Central sometimes has. Uh, if you use AMT and you want AMT to connect to your Mesh Central server, there's a port 4433 that uh, is called the MPS port. And I won't cover that in this video too much. But this one, we use a broader set of TLS um, protocols. And that's because we want to be able to support legacy or older hardware that's still connecting to that port. Uh, obviously, when it comes to port 443 or the mesh agent, we only support the latest protocols because you know, those are kind of guaranteed to be updated to the latest versions. But for older AMT machines that are not, not updated, we, we do allow that to still connect. Um, another aspect of the architecture here, and we're more than halfway done, but I think this is one of the most important things to understand, especially if you're going to set up uh, reverse proxies or firewalls in front of mesh centrals or TLS offloaders. Uh, the way the agent connects is that it does a WebSocket to the server and it will see the HTTPS certificate. Now this is the same certificate that the browser will see, but the problem is that certificate can change you know, every 45 days if you have Let's Encrypt or you can change providers or you can put your own. And so that certificate can change and the agent still needs to authenticate the server regardless of the certificate you use uh, in front of it. Now, we could have used a set of trusted routes or so on, but the, the way the agent works is that it actually will trust the agent server certificate that's in the back here. So this is like a, a more fixed certificate, a, a longer uh, standing certificate. 
And so what happens is the agent connects first, sees this web certificate, opens a WebSocket session, and then it does a secondary check inside the WebSocket to validate that the server really has the agent certificate here. Now, in the secondary check, the agent will tell the server what outer certificate, what the HTTPS certificate that it saw. And the server has the choice to say, is this really the certificate that is expected or not? So essentially, if you're running a man in the middle, and I may have a graphic like here, you have a reverse proxy or you have a TLS offloader. That one may have the web certificate. So the agent will connect to that, we'll see that certificate. But then the WebSocket will go through that reverse proxy to the, the Mesh Central server. And the Mesh Central server will authenticate using the agent certificate. But the Mesh Central server needs to validate that the agent saw the, the correct HTTPS server, uh, HTTPS server certificate. So what we're going to do is that there's configuration options in Mesh Central that allow Mesh Central to go and fetch this certificate here. And you don't have to give it the private key. You just have to have Mesh Central fetch that certificate so it knows what certificate the agents are expected to see when they connect. And then, of course, once that happens, then the full uh, second uh, check happens and everything is OK. Now, uh, the second check doesn't always happen. Uh, the, the agent, um, when it connects, if it does the second check and sees that the server is legitimate, it will cache the outer certificate, the, the web certificate itself from HTTPS. And then later, when it connects again, if it sees the same HTTPS certificate, it will not do the secondary uh, check. So that uh, allows us to scale a lot faster because the server here doesn't have to deal with uh, a lot of certificates signing and checking for the second step. Now, the server, in turn, always verifies the, the certificate of the agent. It's not in this picture here, but there's another part going from the server to the agent to verify what, what the identifier of the agent is. And in that case, the agent would use its certificate to identify to the server. So that's uh, how that works. And this is the exact protocol exchange that happens. So th uh, the way the diagram here is, uh, it's because some of the exchange happens simultaneously. So as soon as this connection happens, both the server and the agent will send commands. And they can crisscross on the network. And this is perfectly OK. Uh, so th this is not a protocol where the server starts and then the agent responds. Uh, instead, to make it a little faster, uh, as soon as there's a connection, both sides will trigger these, these uh, exchanges simultaneously and respond to the previous message of the other one. So that's why you know, it's fairly fast. And you can take a look at the exchange here. Um, I'm not going to go through this. There's a, another part, interesting thing about the agent is that we built our own WebRTC stack. And this uh, allows us, instead of routing the traffic through the server, we, we can set up a WebRTC directly between the browser and the agent, and we can bypass the server entirely. Now, this is an option. And um, right now, as of this recording, there's some, still some trouble with WebRTC we have to go fix. But the, the code in the agent is there for direct browser to agent communication. This is super useful if you're, especially if you're on the same network as, for example, you're on a, your home network, you access Mesh Central, and you're trying to manage a machine that's on your network, instead of going all the way to, you know, maybe out of state or out of country, and then back to your house to manage a device that's, you know, 12 feet away from you, instead of doing that, WebRTC will allow you to have the traffic go straight through to the device. So that's uh, the exchange of how we set up WebRTC when that happens. And lastly, here, there's a section on uh, the Mesh Messenger, which is a chat application that's built into uh, Mesh Central that does support video and audio using, uh, using WebRTC, in addition to file transfer and, uh, of course, chat commands. Anyway, that's a quick review of 
the Mesh Central design and architecture document. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.